I want to talk to you today and I'm starting a new series. What's spiritual salvation? What's spiritual salvation? What's spiritual salvation? And uh, part one of my series, I want to talk about one way with two sides. One way with two sides. So what's spiritual salvation? One way with two sides. Let us pray. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we just want to say thank you for this privilege you've given us today, my God, to hear your word. Bless us, touch us, communicate to us. Even as, my God, we are anticipating a great move after the word through the music. Let this be a blessed moment. In the name of Jesus, we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse number 16. In the KJV, the Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. That word right there. That word, it's, it's our emphasis for today. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Why does man need salvation? We need to start here. Because somebody can say, I'm a good person. I don't do this. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't fornicate. Blah, 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 blah. Why do I need salvation? Can't I make it to heaven because I'm a good person? You see, you got to understand that uh, when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, everything that came out of their loins was born out of sin. David says, my mother and father conceived me out of sin. All of us, by virtue of the fall of men, we were born in sin. So sin is not what we do, but sin is our nature. All right? So sin is not something that you do. It is your nature. So now, Jesus had to die in order to change your nature and to give you a divine nature. So the nature you received after salvation was a different nature. Without that change of nature, none of us could be saved. So that is why we needed to be saved regardless of our good works. All right? Now, very important, God freely offers all people the gift of eternal life and the opportunity to know God and have a personal life, I mean a personal relationship with him and be with him forever through faith in Jesus Christ. But understanding this exact process by which that life becomes available to us is sometimes difficult. Now for this reason, ladies and gentlemen, God paints various pictures in the Bible to help us grasp the concept and the reality of spiritual salvation. And each one of the pictures he, he paints has its own unique emphasis. And the series I'm starting today examines three of those pictures. Number one is salvation. Two, redemption. Three, justification. All these words are addressing the question of salvation. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the word salvation is from the Greek word soteria, which means deliverance, which means to rescue, which means bringing safely through or keeping from harm. Soteria means deliverance, rescue, bringing safely through or keeping from harm. Soteria. Now, hear me. Soteria is a very pivotal subject in the Bible which every person should understand. Soteria, in fact, I, I'm going to be very frank about this. A pastor that does not understand Soteria has no business on the pulpit. It, it is that important. You have to understand the meaning of Soteria, the meaning of salvation. You see, salvation is like this. It's like a billionaire puts maybe 10 million pounds in your bank account and you are enjoying, I think I'm going to need help there. You are, you, are, you are enjoying this money, these pounds. However, you don't know the one that gave you. So now we are showing you, we are teaching you, making you understand the one that gave you the salvation. Because sometimes we enjoy the blessings of salvation, but we, we, we do not understand so, hear me. The, the Gospels are written so that you can believe. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Their purpose is to make you believe. Now, the epistles are written for the believer to know the one that they have believed. So, many people have believed, but they don't know the one they've believed. 
you, you, you catch my flow. So you got the million in the bank, you are eating it, but you don't know who it came from. So today we are going to show you where this thing came from and how it impacts your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. So the process of salvation is described in the New Testament as the way. The way or the road that leads through earthly life to eternal life with God in heaven. So salvation is the way. Somebody say the way. Matthew 7, 13 to 14, it calls it the road that leads to life. Mark 12, 14 calls it the way of God. Acts 16, 17 calls it the way to be saved. This is the way. And I put some scriptures there in case you want to study deeper. Uh, this, those are some of the scriptures. You can either take a screenshot or whatsoever. Now hear me. In order to ultimately inherit a place in God's eternal kingdom, we must walk the road of salvation to the very end of our earthly life. In other words, for you to be fully saved, don't turn on the way. You gotta walk. We said it's a road, right? You must walk this road to the end. Let's say you, you say that you are going to Deben and you arrive at Richards Bay and you turn back. You didn't, you didn't make it to Deben. So we are saying we are going to heaven. We are going to heaven. We are going to heaven. Somewhere in the clouds you make a U-turn. You are not going to make it to heaven. So we must walk this way for the rest of our lives. I see your faces are changing. For the rest, as long as you are breathing, you are you're going to walk this way. Oh my God, Master Lord, they are not hearing me. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard, it's challenging. But we got to walk this way. In order to ultimately inherit our place in the kingdom of God. Very important. Salvation is one way with two sides and three stages. One way. Somebody say one way. One way. With two sides. Somebody say two sides. two sides. And three stages. Somebody say three stages. Now, the one way of salvation, Jesus Christ is the way. The only way to God the Father. John 4, 14, 6 in the NIV. Jesus answered, I am the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Do you hear? It's, it's, it's very frank. You can't go to the Father if you don't go through the avenue of Christ. You can't use Bapanzi, no. You can't use Ishna, Krishna, and all these things. One way and that way is Jesus. That way, is, you, you, got, you, you got to believe this Jesus. Or else, you don't have a way to the Father. Acts 4.12 in the NIV says, Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven to mankind which we must be saved. If it's not Jesus, it's not salvation. It got to be Jesus for it to be salvation. Oh, I feel like I'm teaching right here. Now, God offers and provides salvation very importantly because of his grace. Not because you, 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 you are a cool girl when out when you move to. No. Because of his grace. Or somebody think, I'm too, I'm too good. No. Because of his grace. You see, both the virgin and the prostitute equally need the grace. Both the killer and the innocent man equally need the grace. So God offers and provides salvation because of his grace. What is grace? Is his, is his undeserved favor, love, kindness, and help, which he demonstrated through his son. Romans 3, 23 to 24, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see it? So that's why you need grace. 24, being justified freely by his grace. You see it right there. We are justified freely. We are saved, in other words, freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, very important, God's gift of salvation is based, number one, on Christ's death, Romans 3, 25 and 58. His resurrection, Romans 5, 10. And his intercession in heaven for us, Hebrews 7, 25. So this gift of salvation is based on Christ's death, resurrection, and intercession through Christ's death when he died and rose he overcame death and therefore we also overcome death which is separation with God we've overcome that through Christ his resurrection now to us that means the same power that rose Christ from the dead is also in us according to Romans 8 
And so now our mortal bodies are empowered. We are able to rise over the promptings of our flesh towards sin. And as well, his intercession gives us access to the Father. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, the two sides of salvation. Spiritual salvation, ladies and gentlemen, is a gift of God's grace that is received through faith in Jesus Christ. Salvation is a what? Is a gift of God's grace. That is the one side. That is the grace of God. And on the other side, it's received through faith in Jesus Christ. Romans 3, 22, 24, 25, and 28. Now hear this. Salvation is extended to us by God as a result of his grace. And is received by us through the response of faith. So he gives by grace, we receive by faith. The one side God gives it by grace, we receive it by faith. In other words, when our faith is not in place, we can't be saved. Though God has made salvation available. Ephesians 2.8, I'll read this one. The Bible says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. You see it right there. For by grace, grace saves you when you release your faith to it. And the Bible says, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It is the what? It is, this thing is a gift. Salvation is a gift. None of us have earned it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, the three stages of salvation. I'm closing it here. The three stages of of salvation we have three stages one is the past stage of salvation the present stage of salvation and the future stage of salvation the past stage has to do with your spirit when you got born again at the point of salvation your spirit was saved catch this your spirit the one we can't see the one in you. The spirit is so pivotal that should it leave your body, this is what they say. He has left us. Think about it. The body is there, we can see it, but people are crying. Because the, the true you is the spirit. So that day in that crusade, in the tent, when you lifted up your hands and you were crying, some of you in that mega church, and you lifted up your hands, what happened is that your spirit was saved. But not your flesh. Your flesh is not saved. Oh yes, it's not saved. That is why when you are fasting and you smell KFC, you start having problems. Why? This thing is not saved. Your, your nose is not saved. Your nose is not saved. <laughs> you are not hearing what I'm saying. Yes, 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 yes. You are born again, you love the Lord. You see something beautiful, you lose your revelation. Am I talking to people? It's, it's not saved. It's not saved. You must just know that it is my spirit <laughs> that is saved. I'm capable of trouble. Oh, let me leave it there. <laughs> I had an oh yes, that's why. <laughs> now, this includes, the past stage includes the personal experience that take place at the point in time when we choose to receive God's forgiveness for sins and to entrust our lives to Christ. Somebody shout Hallelujah. At this point, we pass from spiritual death to spiritual life. Somebody shout hallelujah. And now the present stage, as I'm about to close, has to do mainly, uh, you can be giving him the microphone, Zoli, let's just uh, organize that. Now, the present stage of salvation has to do with your mind. Your mind, we renew it every day by the word of God. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. In other words... Don't think because I read the Bible yesterday, I'm fine today. No, you're not fine. You read it today, you read it tomorrow too. Or else, take two days without reading the Bible. You, you start becoming a problem. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Let's say maybe you, you're a man, you like proposing sisters. When you read the word, you have order. But once you don't read the word, now your mouth becomes a problem. It becomes a vuvuzela. That I love you, I love you, I love all of you. <laughs> Am I making sense? Then there is the future stage. The future stage, this is the ultimate. It's whereby we are going to be given glorified bodies. Okay. Have I told somebody, raptured bodies. Bodies that can no longer be sick and so forth. That is the future stage of salvation based on Romans 13, 11 to 12, 
1 Thessalonians 5, 8 to 9, 1 Peter 1 to 5. Somebody shout hallelujah. And now these ladies and gentlemen, it includes receiving eternal rewards for faithfully following Christ and overcoming trials of the world. Let, let us quickly read Revelation 2, 7. The Bible says, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. In other words, if you don't overcome, no reward. You got to overcome. You got to persevere to the end. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want us to stand up on our feet. And we're just going to make a short prayer. And then from then, Mr. Lufuno Dagada is going to be coming on the stage. Ben, you can be making your way to the stage. Just in a minute, let's just bless God for his word and how it is spoken to us. Father, we just want to say thank you for this powerful time, my God, of hearing your word. My Father God, we know that your word does not miss. When it goes out, it changes lives. It impacts. It turns things around. Father God, we bless you. My God, we appreciate you. My God, we honor you. My God, we reverence you. Oh, come on, church, lift up your voice just in a minute. Prepare the atmosphere.